Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I received an email from someone telling me that they had a picture of a loved one that they wanted to have printed on a t-shirt, but they didn't know how to do a couple things. First of all, they didn't know how to properly clip them out from the background. And secondly, they didn't know how to export the image from Photoshop so that it would print properly on the t-shirt. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to work on three different images with each image getting increasingly more difficult. This first image is the best case scenario. The model is in front of a seamless paper background. If you haven't taken your picture yet, put the person, animal, object, whatever it is you want printed on the t-shirt, put it in front of a blank wall or best case seamless paper backdrop and you'll be able to clip them out and export it from Lightroom to have printed within a few minutes. The next image is going to be a little more difficult. It's of my dog. You can see that the floor is blurry, his paw down here is blurry, his back is blurry. I'd like to clip out his head to have it printed on a t-shirt. This is a little harder to do. And finally is an image that's going to be nearly impossible to do. Um, so my grandson, I'll talk more about the details of the image in a minute, but you can see the background super busy. So this one's going to be very difficult to do properly. Let's start with this easiest one. As I mentioned, the model is in front of a seamless paper background. This is really so easy to do. What you need to do is get a selection tool. Hit the W key on your keyboard and you'll get one of three selection tools, either the object selection, quick selection, or the magic wand tool. It doesn't matter which one. When you have that tool active, up here you'll have select subject. The reason why I wanted you to grab the tool and get this button here instead of going up to the select uh, menu down to subject is because with this button you have a little drop down and this drop down by default will be on device and that will give you a quicker result. But if you go to cloud as I am now, you'll get detailed results and you'll get a better selection. Now, as I mentioned, by default, it will always show device. You could actually change this so the default is cloud. That's what I did. To do that, go to Photoshop settings or preferences. On a Mac, Settings is under the Photoshop 2025 menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And I think on a PC, it might be called Preferences, not Settings. Either way, go down to it and then go down to Image Processing. When you do that, right here at the top, you can see Select Subject and Remove Background. Go to this dropdown and change it to Cloud, Detailed Results. When you do that, all, you don't have to go to this little drop down and change it anymore. You could just click select subject. And when you do it, we'll find the subject in the image and it will select it. And you can see we have the marching ants around our subject. Just double check that it caught all of your subject or it's not selecting part of the background. In this case, it looks pretty much perfect. It has the little like bow up here in her hair. Everything's selected fine. Then go to this button, select and mask. When you do that, you'll have one of several different views. You could see I have a black background view. You can go to this drop down and change it. Usually, you know, for a simple thing like this, I just need to be on one view and I like to be on black. Sometimes I'll be on overlay. It depends uh, what the person is wearing or, you know, it might interfere and it might not be clear if the selection is proper. So just switch between off and overlay or on black. Sometimes you'll have to switch to a different view. I'll show you that when we get to some of the other images so that you can make sure that you're getting a good selection. I'm gonna stay with on black. With on black, you'll notice that there's parts in her hair that aren't clipped out properly, but everything else looks pretty good. Once you decide on the view you're going to use, Go up here and click on refine hair, obviously, if there's a person in the photo. When you click this, you'll notice that it will improve considerably. Now, you'll notice it still didn't get part of her hair over here. What you need to do is get the refine edge brush. On the left-hand tool panel, you'll see there's a number of different brushes. The second brush from the top is the refine edge brush. And it has a plus and minus brush, but you know what? It doesn't really matter when you're brushing on the hair. Get a larger brush or a smaller brush. Larger brush is the right bracket key, smaller brush, left bracket key. I'll get a larger brush. I'm going to brush right in here. So you don't have to be precise. You're just brushing over the area and then let go. And you can see it improved it. You can come down here and do that a little more and then come over here maybe. Okay, so that looks decent. 
The next thing you could do to improve the selection is go over here and click this little checkbox, decontaminate colors. So watch your hair when I do that. You can see it improved considerably. Then, but maybe in here, I still have the refine edge brush. I could come in here, brush in there. If it looks like it made a messed up, you could get this. This is just a regular brush and you could brush in or out an area. See how it took out that little white dot, but it looks good overall. When you're ready, go to output two, and I like to output it to a new layer and then click OK. And you'll see she's perfectly clipped out. Now, to export this from Photoshop so that it prints properly on a t shirt, you need to do it a very specific way. Go up to File, then down to Export, then over to Export As. Then what you're going to want to do is at the top, once it loads in here, you want to change the format to PNG. All right, I happen to have it here. And then make sure, you can see that I should show you, there's PNG, JPEG, and GIF available. Make sure it's PNG and make sure that transparency is checked. With that checked, it will have a transparent background so that it will print properly on the t-shirt. Now, wherever you're getting your t-shirt made, they may have specification for an image size, uh, like, you know, a minimum or a maximum size. Let's just pretend that they say the maximum uh, size on a long edge is 5,000 pixels. Let's just pretend. So just come in here and put 5,000 on the width since that's longer edge. And it will automatically resize. Once you tab out of that field, it will resize the other um the other uh, factor, which is height, automatically. And then, so it's a PNG, and we resized it the way we want. All this stuff here, metadata, if you want to include your copyright and contact info, of course, do that. Uh, most places where you're going to have T-shirts printed want you to use the sRGB color space, so make sure that is checked. And you could embed the color profile as well, and just click Export. And then it's going to ask you where. I'll just do it to my desktop. And then you could give it a name. And I'm just going to call this the model or model. All right. We'll click export. So that is there. No, that was easy. Let's do something a little more difficult. We have this uh, photo of my dog. I just want his head. So again, we're going to get any of the selection tools. And we're going to click select subject. Again, make sure you're using cloud detailed results. It is better than using just you know your computer now it does send the image up to adobe servers so if you don't want to do that then make sure you're using instead of cloud you're using device all right now you could see that it did select his head pretty good but it selected his leg down here and i don't want his leg in the image it will look stupid with kind of one leg down there so what i want to do is i want to get the quick selection tool which i happen to have you uh, picked anyway if not just long press in this little um, on the tool and it's kind of a tool cubby you can see there's three different tools there make sure you're using the quick selection tool what I do is I leave it right here on this first option by default when it's on that it's on add so I'd be adding to the selection but I want to remove from the selection so I hold in the option key on my Mac it's alt key on a PC and it will flip to the minus when I do that and you could do, and you could come in, you get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key or a larger selection tool. And the left bracket key will make it smaller. So you can see then I got to get up between his ear and his cheek. Make sure you're holding that alt option key. Oops. If I, I accidentally on my magic mouse, sometimes you hit it and it will resize the image. Just hit command or control zero to fit it to screen. That happens sometimes with these magic mice uh, from Apple. All right, so it didn't select part of his ear here, so I'm going to come in. Now I don't have to hold in the Alt Option key for that. So you can see this one's a little more difficult. Okay, it looks decent. Around, 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 look around. Okay, maybe it didn't get part of his cheek here. All right. Okay, now we're going to select and mask. All right, now you can see how it has these kind of rough edges here. What I could do is get the third brush from the top. This is just a regular brush. 
And what I want to do is I want to use the minus part of it and just remove like this here. So I'll just brush in here and remove. And over here maybe, because that kind of looks weird. Wherever it looks like it might, I might need to refine it, I could get the refine edge brush, which is the second one from the top, and I'll get a smaller one, and I could come in here and maybe brush in there. Maybe brush the edge of his ear there. See, that improved it a little. Um, now, so far it looks okay, but what I often do is I'll smooth it a little, and sometimes this will take a second to kick in. So you'll move the slider, and you won't see anything happen, then you'll move it more, and then five seconds later it kicks in, and it looks horrible. So just move it a little bit, and just give it time to kind of kick in. So I'm going to smooth the edges. And I'm going to feather the edge a little bit. You can see how I feathered it. Now, if you look right in here, all right, I'm going to feather it. It takes a second to kick in. There, it just kicked in, all right? So I think you feather the edge a little bit, and that looks all right. Now, you could try refined hair. It probably won't do anything. It knows the difference between fur and hair, but you could see it kind of added. It kind of actually, let me undo that. To undo it, hit Commander Control Z or Z to undo it. All right. Undo it. It's not undoing. There it is. It undid it. But you see how it added some artifacts or some of his back up here? But look down here. It actually improved down here. So I'm going to click Refine hair, hair again and just watch down here. You see it improved. It gave it better of an edge. So I kind of like that. So what we'll do is we'll get the minus brush, make sure we're on minus, and we'll come up here and we'll just very carefully remove this. It's going to take a while to kick in. And then and over in here maybe a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. So when you're satisfied, you could click decontaminate colors again and see if that improves stay pretty much the same go down here and go to a new layer and then click ok and there's uh, his head is clipped out it has no pixels around him so this is the perfect um, photo you need for printing on a t-shirt so then we could again go to file export export as Make sure that we're doing a PNG again with transparency. Click export. And then this is Fredo. It has his name right there. So we'll just do that. And notice it's dot PNG. Then once that exports, we'll go to the one that's going to be probably almost impossible to do. This is my grandson. He was helping us put up the Christmas tree. You can see we just got the tree up, not decorated yet. And he put on some reindeer antlers. And we were kind of laughing at him. And he was looking at us like, why are you laughing at me? So again, same thing. We're going to get any of the selection tools by tapping the W key on our keyboard. Go to select subject. And wait till it selects the subject. And you can see it selected him. Now I do want the reindeer ears included in the selection. So what we're going to do is get a different selection tool. Instead of the quick selection tool, we're going to long press the mouse button and we're going to get the object selection tool. Then what we're going to do is we'll make sure this drop down says rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle over that antler ear or antler. Let it do its thing. It takes a second. You can see it did this selection there. And then I'm going to do it over this antler. And by the way, I'm in plus mode. The second um, icon from the left, that means I'm adding to the selection. So make sure you're doing it that way. Now you'll notice there's some marching ants like in his head here, like between his antler and his hair. Those shouldn't be there. So we're going to get a quick selection tool. So we're not going to hold the option key or the Alt key, and we're going to add to the selection. All right. So, so far he's kind of clipped out, but we have to refine it. So we're going to go to Select and Mask. All right. Now you could see that we have some kind of one of the light bulbs over here coming through. Um, maybe in here needs to be improved. So we're going to start out with the Refine Edge brush. 
And again, it doesn't matter if you're in plus or minus mode for this brush. I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the Leprechaun key. And I'm just going to paint in between here. And you can see how that improved that. We could try up in here and maybe down in here and see if that improves. And it did. It's pretty much a magic brush. We'll come in here and see if this helps. This is going to be harder, I think. It kind of helped a little, but you can see how it kind of put a hole in the um, antler, but not too bad. So what I'm going to do now is get the actual brush brush in add mode, and we'll click right there, hold the shift key down, and then click down here, and it will draw a straight line. All right, click again. Hold the shift key down. Click again. You can see it through that straight line. Not too bad there. Now, what I often will do is I'll switch off when I have a difficult selection like this. I'll switch off the view from on black. You could try on overlay. You could see what that looks like. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go to like black on white to make sure that that looks pretty good. Because sometimes you'll find that it's not selecting something like in the middle of his hair or something like that. So try some of these others. And here's the image clipped out. You can see what it's going to look like clipped out. With it on that, you could come up here and click Refine Hair. And you can see how now that put holes in his hair. So I don't like that. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z on my Mac or Z, Control Z on a PC. Um, we could decontaminate colors. Click this little checkbox on the right. That isn't bad. What we need to do is erase right in here. So we're going to get this brush, but a minus brush. So third brush from the top, minus. We're going to click once right there. We're going to hold, go right about there. Hold the shift key down and click right there. So we draw a straight line. That looks decent. I still don't like this kind of blue light coming through up here. So I'll get a minus brush. And you could hit pl command plus on a Mac. And command minus or command plus on a Mac to zoom in. Control plus on a PC or command minus to zoom out, control minus to zoom out. And right in here, I want to improve this. So we're going to have this minus brush, get a smaller brush, click once there. It's not too bad. See, we got the kind of blue light coming in there, which making it look funky. Hit command or control zero to fit the screen that looks decent i mean it's not great but it's better we're now put it to a new layer we're gonna click okay now we have him clipped out and to print this to the t-shirt then we need to export it as a png go to file export export as And it sometimes takes a while for it to give you the preview rendering when you're doing the PNG. So make sure it's a PNG transparency. We could resize it if we want. I'm not going to bother doing that. Again, just if you want to include metadata, of course, do that. Make sure you convert it to sRGB and to embed the color profile. Click export. His name's Hudson. So we're going to call him Hudson and export it. And you can see it takes a second to export a PNG file. And once it does, you could do that. Now, when you have these uh, images without backgrounds, with transparencies, like here's the one of Hudson, if you view it, it might view as white or gray in this case. But it is clipped out. You could see even in the little preview here, it's clipped out. So don't let that fool you. You could see in the model, the first one we did, you could see it's clipped out around her when you look at the little thumbnail. When you click and look at it, it's going to look gray. But don't worry, it is clipped out. Same thing with the dog here. So another way with the Mac, I don't know if I print the space bar, it still kind of looks kind of gray. But it's definitely clipped out. You could see even the... Um, Doing it this way, you could see how the it, you could see the object behind it's more translucent, uh, but it is clipped out. So if I send this to any of those places that print T-shirts, it'll print properly. 
So that's how you do that. I hope that helps. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.